Hey everyone, I wanted to thank you for your support on the last video that I did. It seems I got a lot of really good feedback and a lot of people really enjoyed that technique, so thanks again. Um, I got a lot of questions on that though actually about my brushes. As you can see here, I have my brushes organized sort of into categories with some spaces, almost like folders really, and people were wondering A, how I did it, and B, if it was an easy trick or a plugin or something like that. Um, to be honest, it's actually it's actually fairly simple using nothing more than just Photoshop's tools and settings and whatnot. It just it takes a little while to organize them. Um, all you really need to know is how to use the preset manager, the brush preset manager, and how to make a custom brush. And so let me actually show you what my brushes looked like before. And this is when I first started to organize it. So you can still see these little category texts in here, except it's a huge jumble. In this industry, time is very often money, and so if you spend your time hunting for brushes, even ones that are the most used, like your ones that you may group together, you're going to end up wasting hours and hours over the course of months, you know, even weeks even, just, you know, trying to find the brush that you need if they're not organized nicely. You know, and so, in here you can see I have things like basic brushes, my painterly brushes, textured brushes, speckled cloud, rock, special effects, charcoal, and foliage and trees. Some of these things I don't separate. It's just easy to keep them grouped together because they're similar or they're unimportant or small sets. But anyways, let me go back to this set and I'll show you exactly how I do this. The first thing you're going to want to know how to do is create these little labels. These are what's going to help separate and be easy to recognize. And the trick to doing this is, is making them consistent and so they're very easy to pick out. I'll show you a problem I ran into as well, because it may not be as easy as you think. So just going to jump over to this. So here is where you might decide that you would want, oh, I'll just write the text in there and I have this. This is, by the way, is a 500 by 500 pixel document. It makes it easy to keep it consistent and it's smart to keep it square. But let me show you what happens when I just create this and make, try to make this into a brush. So I'm going to go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. And see, you can see right here already that it's getting kind of screwy. I'm not even going to make the brush, but see, because it's 500 by 500 and you have all this blank space around what's the actual brush, you can see that it gets stretched. So depending on the length of the title in your brush, it's going to stretch it and it's going to make it fairly unreadable for longer titles. The trick to this is then, is I'm just going to basically select an area at the top and an area at the bottom get the paint bucket, create a new layer, and just fill that in with black. Now, we'll go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and you can see now that it puts that border on the top and the bottom and keeps the text the same. And so what you can do is create a template like this with those bars and just change the text in the middle and then create your categories as necessary. So now that you can see that, you can see how these are fairly consistent, even though the text varies in size a little bit it becomes much easier to differentiate them between each other. So once you've created those, you can put them where you need to, or you might have to worry about organizing your brushes a little bit first. But the other brush type you're going to need is a spacer. So what I'm going to do is create a new document. Just one pixel by one pixel It's all you need. I'm just going to zoom in, not that it's really necessary. This is your one pixel. What I'm going to do is just create a, take a very light color. Doesn't, you know, you don't want it white because that's not going to create a brush for you. It's actually going to give you an error or something along those lines. And so basically you just tap in there, you get a little bit of the pixel information just as a value. Edit, define, brush preset. I'm just going to call this one spacer. All right. Go back to here. And so come down in here and you see you just have this one pixel spacer. You know, it just, you just want it to look blank is the only thing. So you can do whatever you want with it as long as it looks blank. It doesn't really matter as long as it works for you. So you have that now, but the problem is you can rename it, you can delete it, and then say you come into the preset manager where you have all your brushes, right? You can delete it or you can rename it. And because you're going to need many of these spacers, you're going to need to be able to space things out. There's no easy way to make another one or is there? So what I'm going to do is actually take this and you come up here to save set and you can save just this brush. So I'm going to save that as spacer, right? So I've saved that. Now I'm going to do is load it back in. Boom, another spacer. I'm going to load a couple more. And you just keep doing this, but another easy way. Select now that I have four of them. Save these. Save it over what I have as another spacer. 
load the spacers again, then I have 8, load it again, 16, or 12. Maybe I can't do math, maybe I can't. Alright, so we have the spacers now, and what you do is you determine how many you need to space this out. So this is six right here, and somebody needs six of those spacers. The problem is, is when you have the thumbnails like this, and you drag them up, it's really, really slow. And so what you can do then is knowing that you need six, just make it smaller. Select six of these out, drag them up before that category, and then you come back to large, large thumbnails, and you'll see how it's spaced out. So I'm just going to call that done for now, and you come back up to the top and you'll see that it's spaced out. And then what you can do, which I did, and so the categories are separated, is create a space under that. So we'll go back into the preset manager, simply just drag that over. Done. So you have that space there, and so you just keep repeating this until you have exactly what you want. The catch is, is that this has to be the same width every single time. So right here you can see I have four, eight, nine. This is nine wide. If I make it ten wide, you can see it screws everything up. So you have to make sure you're consistent with the width of your brush drop-down, and it should be all right. The one problem you're going to run into, though, which is a little bit of a pain to deal with, is you're going to end up, say, adding new brushes in your set and putting them into the categories that you already have. And so let me just, say, move this up there and move another one up there. And then all of a sudden you have these gaps again. You know, this is getting moved around where you don't want it. So all you really have to do is either move those back down to where you have maybe some extra spacers at the bottom, or just simply delete them. And then you're back to normal. So organizing your brushes the way you want them initially is probably going to take the longest. But once you get them there and you have all your categories, adding or removing certain brushes to get your set where you want it to be is not going to be very difficult at all. And it's going to save you a lot of time in the end, you know, so you don't have some complex set like this with brushes where you have a general idea where they are, but you don't know exactly what you're looking for. Anyways, I hope that was useful. Um, I don't think I missed anything out in the details. Um, to get to the preset manager, I don't know if I really explained this, there's this little gear right here. You just click that and down the preset manager. Another way to get there is up here when you have the brush tool selected. Find the gear again, preset manager. If you check the description, I provided a link to my brush set down there that you can download. It's probably about 80 megabytes. Um, the format is the exact same as you see in the video, and it's brushes that I've made myself, ones I've gotten from friends, colleagues, and from the internet. Um, if you want them to display properly, you're going to have to display them at nine brushes wide like I showed you. But what you could also do if you don't want to completely swap over to my brush set, just figure out the ones that you might want to use and just include them in your own brush set after you've organized it. Or maybe even just snag the category brushes yourself so you don't have to go through and make all those. It's up to you. Anyway, I hope that was helpful and I hope it helps your workflow. Take care and I'll catch you next time.